we're going to use Responder running on Kali Linux to lie to a client running on server 2016. Have both VMs running. Log into server 2016 normally and log into Kali as root. Root with the password of Kali. The reason why is Responder has to run as root and also we're going to look at some of its log files. And to delete those, we need root privilege. Come up to Apps in Kali. Click that. You'll find Responder in number 9, Sniffing and Spoofing. But if you forget, we can just search for it. Just type Responder and there it is. Click that. Responder has a whole bunch of switches. Its primary task or job or purpose is to respond to NetBIOS name server queries, LLMNR, and multicast DNS. But it can also capture some authentication. If you request it in clear text, it'll capture it in clear text. Otherwise, if it's NTLM or something like that, it'll capture the hash. When you type responder, at the very least, you need to specify the interface. TAC capital I, and for Kali, it's ETH0. There are other choices, too. You could just analyze. Don't respond, just watch what's going on. You can, if you are Mac, specify the interface by IP. You can also spoof IPv6 and IPv4. So have Responder spoof its IP. Now this is interesting. You could have HTTP traffic be asked to authenticate. Now you'd have to social engineer a user somehow into going to Responder as the web server. But we could force basic authentication, which is clear text. We could also respond to DHCP queries. So if someone sends out a DHCP request, Responder can make an offer and can even inject a phony DNS in the offer. And then there are some choices for it to behave like a proxy. You can also force the authentication level down to LM for the older clients, or at least the clients that support LM, Land Manager, as opposed to NTLM. So I think we're going to specify the interface and say basic authentication for web traffic. Let's do that. Let's type responder, TAC capital I, ETH zero, TAC B, and also TAC V for verbose. Press enter. It's now listening. It's forcing basic authentication. And we can see some statistics here. It's listening on Ethernet zero, this IP address, both V4 and V6. We can already see some stuff coming in. If we scroll up, we can see that it is pretending to be an HTTP, HTTPS server, SMB, SQL FTP, <laughs> IMAP, POP3, SMTP. Wow, LDAP, dang. Good stuff here. And we can see all the poisoners. We did not request DHCP, but it's doing the other poisoning. Oh, this is so good. Okay, it's listening. Let's go over to our client and let's start with just some SMB. So on the client, open a run line, click start and type run and make sure you choose run. I don't know why Windows Defender comes up first. I have no idea. Choose run and then type backslash backslash some server name, server, server one just like that. Press enter. So this client thinks it's finding server one. Now look at this. It already captured the administrator trying to provide the administrator's password. I mean, that's what Windows does. It'll try to use the existing logged in password already. But when that fails, so to speak, of course, it's all going to fail, then we're prompted to log in again. Well, I'm going to just provide a different username and password here. I'm going to say that this user is Jaja, and the password is let me in. Press enter. And you can see it captured the NTLM 
hash for Jaja as well. So the user gives up on the file and print server and decides to go to the web. And they've received some kind of phishing email with a link, so they're going to go to responder's IP and not the real server's IP. So HTTP slash slash 192.168.252.128. You'll have to put in your Kali's IP. Press enter, and it says, who are you? Log in. Oh, well, I am Moo with a password of um, open sesame. Enter. And since this was in basic, it's clear text. How cool is that? Now, the only thing that's a bummer is that Responder does not immediately try to prompt the user to log in again. That's the only thing that doesn't quite work like it would in the real world. But we've got some good stuff now. Wow. We have really cool things. We've captured Moo's password for HTTP, captured it twice. If we scroll back here, we captured the hashes for Jaja, and for the administrator. And you know, we could send these to some password cracker. We could just save these hashes. Now, if you wanna just stop Responder, you can, I think, just press Control C to break it. Uh, let's see, did that actually work? Yes, it did. If you wanna see where Responder keeps its logs, go into the file system, and this is where you need to be root here. Go into the file system, and go to user, USR, and go to share, and go down, down, down to responder, open responder, and open logs. And these are the logs. So I can see there's an SMB NTLM v2 log here. Open it up, and this is the administrator. And we captured the hash from the administrator, the NTLM v2 hash. We could conceivably send that to Hashcat or some other cracker. And then we have the HTTP basic clear text. Open that up and you can see the attempts by Moo. The browser apparently sent Moo's password three times, even though we as users didn't see it. So that's how you can use Responder to send fake name lookup responses to a client as well as capture their authentication. And with that, let's move on.